This is a great Slark game, like the boys were saying, but I think, you know, seeing Moon on this Techies has a lot of questions for a lot of viewers. You know, how is the laning going to go? How are they going to make this uh, really shine? Can they make it shine? Yeah, um, I, I, I like Techies as a mid-hero, and four, I think, are the, the two best roles for it. Um, it doesn't have a great win rate, but I think it's improving over time. I think uh, this is a good match to try it out with. Um, it combos well with the stun. Uh, that Saber Light's going to provide. So yeah, I think it's a good match for it. Um, Slark is a, in some ways, good counter. You can remove um, the, the Disarm with Dark Pact. You're pretty survivable. But yeah, there is a lot of AoE damage that can make that life a lot harder. The battle begins. Get right off the bat. That little bit of that sticky bomb applied over to Lukey Lukey. And uh, I even went and dropped the little sign there too. And you might as well. It doesn't do anything else. doesn't do anything now. <laughs> Feels bad. Uh, the least they could do is reduce the cooldown, okay? Drop it much lower. Yes, because that will do so much. <laughs> yes. There's a little little barking going on here. I, I've always liked dog champs. The, I like their oh, 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 oh that they used to do. I know you were not a fan of that originally. It's but. grown on me for sure. I, I used to dislike it, but now I'm a fan. They were uh, innovative at the time and uh, took me a while to realize the true art within their, their, their sound effects. It's because purchase fun, guys. True. I can warm up to fun. It's just going <laughs> to take me longer than the fun normally lasts. And then I'm like, where's the fun stuff? Why isn't it still here? Just, he'll, he'll go to fun kicking and screaming, but he'll get there eventually. <laughs> Bottom lane, though, again, kind of interested to see how this is going to go down. Seeing, you know, how annoying you can possibly be. I mean, you do have the IO, right, who's going to be able to, you know, take a lot of that harass uh, and kind of offset it thanks to the healing. Yeah, exactly. And that's usually how Techies kind of plays. You you get momentum by harassing your opponent. Your base damage is much better than it used to be. You have like 15 more damage or something, or 12 more damage. Uh, and then your nukes are pretty powerful. Um, suicide, or sorry, Blast Off is not as much damage as it was. It just got nerfed, but you deal less damage to yourself. The cooldown's a little bit better, or a little bit worse, actually. But yeah, as a whole, I think Techies is pretty solid. And once you get six, the amount of damage you output is massive. You can jungle fast. There's just a lot of good things about the hero. Uh, but it does have some issues with win rates. Top lane, just a little bit of harassment being traded back and forth between the two supports. Luki should have a little bit of a easier time this time around. Or rather, it wasn't him on that, it was Saberlight, right? But uh, the Sand King seems like it's a little bit more comfortable this time in the lane. Yeah, I think it'll be all right. Medusa doesn't do that much in lane, typically. A little trade going on in the mid lane there. Uh, Ember up to 14 last hits versus Storm's 10, so relatively even here. Stone Bang trying to put out the pressure on Saber. Light has to be careful. He's silenced thanks to that blast up there. Turn it back around. Moon Meander sitting very low himself. And then the top lane Yarn has taken a decent amount of damage. So a lot of kind of flirtations back and forth in this lane in terms of, you know, just poking, trying to put out a little bit of harassment, but no one hard committing just yet. Yeah, the way Stone Bank is doing is the right way. You don't want to overforce an engagement like that. That looks kind of good, but maybe is not enough for you to get a kill. Because then you lose your lane advantage dying when you when you should not. But they're close to the point where a kill is possible, especially if you get the second or a second point of essence shift. You can keep those stats up longer and that means you can bully Saber Light a lot more. That's actually another cool thing about the, the techies actually in this lane counter is that he throws Sticky Bomb, it's going to attach to one of these guys, and they're probably going to be close to each other because of Tether. So you have like a better chance of actually hitting two heroes with it consistently, because if they move away from each other, maybe the Tether breaks, that's not good either. So it's kind of a, a, maybe not a perfect solution, but it's kind of like a cool little positive of playing techies in this dual lane. Definitely a way to try to get some sort of advantage within the lane. But you know, harassment is... Very annoying coming out from Techies. You know, he's had a bit of a rework with the most recent changes, but Lukey Lukey over here on the side? No, I don't have any detection. He's just going to hang out here in the Sandstorm for now. Never feels good to have to Sandstorm defensively like that, though. He'd much rather be in the creep wave, getting last hits, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So still not ideal for him. Um, seven last hits on him for the 17 of Medusa. So definitely losing the safe lane. Whereas on the other side of the map, uh, Saber Light's at 12, Sark's at 16, so it's a lot closer over there. And now uh, Stone Bank has just been low enough on regen for a while here that he's just uh, struggling to actually contest with the power of the Orb of Venom and the Essence Shift. So the uh, the regen trade has just been better on the TSM FTX side. So Moon Meander bringing out Salves, uh, Dragonite with Quick Bracers and other strength items. He's just stabilizing for himself, and that's going to put Dragonite in a good spot. Ooh! Ooh. Ray Lalisa in the mid lane, getting that uh, solo kill. So will get the kill on Stonebank in the bottom 
just on top of that is... Okay. A little even trade, but good for Storm. Picks up fast level 6 now. We'll see if he can gank rotate side lanes. Um, going to the safe lane could be potentially good. Um, try to kill Dragonite or Techies potentially if they have an opportunity, but for like now he'll just get double water rune. I feel like Dragonite's a bit hard, right? Top lane though. Nightmare gets used. Be able to dodge away here. This is depressing. He put a sentry down mid, and it's actually able to kill the enemy ward, but he's not going to realize until it's almost gone. Seven. Oh my god, he's going to get a six. <laughs> oh, oh, he's good. Five. Mid lane. Mid lane. This ward's being gained. It's too late. It's fine. We can watch the kill. He got the ward, guys. It's very important. Thanks, Purge. It was four seconds from despawning, so that's 119 gold. He wouldn't have had otherwise. Good for him. Stone bank stealing stats, but it doesn't even look like it matters. Yeah. They've it on nine stick. Keeps fighting him. Another dragon tail being tossed out. Sticky bomb. Ooh, that was very close. And is he going to be able to... Oh, no. There it is. The last little bit here from Saberlight. There's just not much that Io can do to offset this. Normally, normally it's like, okay, whatever, you get a you get a regen trade, but it seems clear that the high armor and high regen really helps offset that advantage that uh, that Slark gives. So you can steal stats from him, but he's just gonna keep healing. Nice kill there by Dubu. He didn't even have a ward there, just outplays him. Wandered over. Ah, things are looking a little uh, a little bit bounce here. We do see the rotation coming out over to the mid lane. They get lucky on top rune. Nice coverage there by TSM to rotate both supports. Io cannot do that because he's got to stay in the lane with Slark. Yeah, Slark is one of those heroes too that if it starts to fall behind, it just feels like so bad. It can, yeah. Because you're, you're supposed to like dominate the lane and then continue farming. But against the DK, ugh, it's a little bit iffy. Get the stacks up at least with the S and shift, but still feels a bit difficult. Especially, like you said, having the techies throwing out this high magic damage and whatnot. Uh, is causing some problems for the side of Dog Champ. Got very quiet all of a sudden. You realize, like, when you're not hearing all the, the Slark noises or whatever, and then you just go yep. over there. Little Bit dive of a mid. dive over into the mid lane. Counter dive. And just to get the courier, but Bryle gets dragged back. He's been maybe a little bit too sassy, but he does have a remnant up the zip forward, though, coming up for Ray Lily, so hoping perhaps he can make something happen. But Moon Meander at the bottom lane does hold Stone Pick as they do have a pretty decent rotation down to the bottom lane. Hmm. All right, Inkswell is a good way to do this, too. Adds more damage to Stark's initiation, gets him a little bit more chase. Uh, and they end up killing the Techies. And you can't just suicide or blast off anymore to self deny, so yeah, nice kill. One precious permanent agility in Slark's pocket now. Or paws or tail. I don't know where the agility goes. He doesn't have paws. He's got flippers, I think. Mm. I mean, it's technically, I guess, fish hands. Because he does have... It looks well, like he has thumbs. He's got a couple fingers. Does he have Not thumbs? many. Probably depends on the cosmetic. But this one, he's got three whole fingers. Oh. One of Watch out, world. How do you stop him? Trying to pressure Luki Luki top here. Pulls the creep wave past the tower. Just trying to get as much gold as possible. Opting for the double bracer to stabilize his lane. Still doing great on the mid lane for Storm, though. Getting that first blood, dominating the lane. Saying, uh, the reason that um, Brawl got in trouble before is because he was trying to cut the creep wave away from where Storm was. Storm ends up following him, pressuring him, made it harder. That's a lot of uh, a lot of heroes here to ensure that Brawl can pick up the rune. Yep. But they also go for a bit of a smoke, so it looks like they're going to try to get the jump here. So Brawl walks forward. I mean, it's just really good to protect him this way. If you give him the rune, that means Storm can't use those invis runes to go against other lanes. Bounce again down to the bottom, but the stun. Oh, they have the Inkswell, though. Followed up, get some of those stacks. The chase is on over after Saber Light. They need maybe one more hit to do the trick. Can they close the gap? This Io giving the boops. Not quite oh, doing right. enough. Oh, no. 30 something wow. hit points. <laughs> they sick. tried. He kept running with it instead of killing the silence so he wouldn't get attacked. But also, it made it seem like as soon as the silence ends, he's going to take that rend damage. So the moment before he did, he attacks it, gives him the voice line, because it's like one of those moments where you're like, oh, yeah, they, he'll die from rend, right? Mm -hmm. But he just stops right when they turn back. That was cool. And then the voice lines, oh man, it was three steps ahead. It was perfect. Bryo having this rotation down to this bottom area. Looks like he's going to pop the dust here. He's going to clean up over on some of these camps, though. Might as well. Yeah, if you do the rotation, don't let him pull. 
He's got to tether up on Blood Knight. He's fine. A subtle burn. Sark's struggling, though. Definitely want him to do better in this matchup than, uh, than we're seeing, but his net worth is not great. You'd certainly want it to be higher. Um, you know, it's going to be harder for him to be competitive as a carry if he's not ahead, or even with a Medusa, even if he does have counters with Diffusal Blade. Mm -hmm. Diffusal is quite good against a lot of different heroes here, but... There's a little bit of trade. This must be the first blood here. Yeah. Brawl gets pulled under tower. He gets hit by the remnant, and then the, the second tower hit was still going. So just got a little bit over eager. Usually what you want to do is you wait till the remnant's going to explode. He's so excited. <laughs> That's awesome. Oh, man, he's really, really yeah. excited. You're not wrong. <laughs> <laughs> he loves to see it. Having a great time. But we do see the, uh, the zip under the towers. That's a dead Dubu. Saberlight's pressuring Irritation. Clark bottom as well. Makes him run through trees, continues getting last hits. He's just pressuring really good down here. Ooh, we want that straight. courier. Yeah, they managed to get Snowbanks courier. See the uh, reload sound was coming through as they'll bring some friends along. They want this kill on Saberlight. And Rayla Lisa will collect yet another kill. And this is the, the cool combo that we saw right before the patch. The Iowa Storm was utilized by a lot of teams to just really abuse the game because he had so much more mana. And they're not done. They're going diving mid. Mm, they are, and there's a Stone Gaze though coming out from Deuce. He has no mana left. It's like coming through from Briot. We'll be able to punish Bloody Nine. So have mana left on Ray Lalisa. It's looking like he should be fine here. Interesting. He was able to ball away from the uh, the 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 old sticky bomb. I thought it was going to aggro all the way, but it did not. Okay. Mm. And with no mana on Storm, now they can push to the tower. Yeah, they're making their way over here. is hiding in the tree line. They know he's there. They'll drop a ward first. There's that sticky bomb. Blast off with the silence. And they're not going to let that ink smoke go off because they'll get the kill way before. Nicely done by Moon. Good nuke pressure. I love that he's rushing Veil. It stacks so well with your ultimate. Very similar as other magic amplifiers. It's a good way to kill more jungle camps, just impact more damage in the team fight. But Luki's going to rotate over. See if he can land the stun. It's pretty hard, short range, but... Yeah, they know that he's there too. That's light revealing over on the side. So, Ryle going to play it nice and safe, and... Nine. Unlike in the last game, um, Dogchamp's doing a great job defending their towers. They, they struggled a bit with that in the last match because they lost their mid tower so hard, and then that kind of created a lot of pressure on their safe lane as well. But uh, they're doing a good job stabilizing, even if they are slightly behind. The game's definitely a lot closer. Uh, Storm, and with Storm having such a good game so far, 3, 0, and 0. Finally gets his own rune, grabs a regen on the top rune, that's going to feel good. We'll see what if he does something with this. He might gank top stone banks up here. He's got a level 1 pounce, so they could kill Brile. There's a ball forward, but Brile's already out. A lot of heroes though from the side of Dogchamp making their way to this top area, so it feels like they've got some importance on the, uh, the tier 1 top there for the side of Dire, but on the bottom you can see that Saberlight, he's popped the dragon for him. I think this is the second time he's just going to start pushing and remove this tower from their side. Yeah, he's done a really good job pressuring. Um, his net worth is very high. He's out farming Brile by a massive seven or eight gold. <laughs> Pretty shameful. Uh, but the tower's going to die. They didn't have to commit that much. Dubu just sat nearby in case they contested. We'll see if they try to defend top. They TP to the shrine. I would assume that they're not going to bother. It's a little bit tough with the catapult here. Pressuring stone banks hard, they can get relocated, he can dark pact it. They're gonna put a ward down, see if the TP. Can. Yeah, they're gonna try it. Alright, let's see if they can get a catch. Saber line, finding Bloody Nine over here on the side immediately. The stun is just a lot of damage, so not gonna be able to run away. Oh, All the green group coming out from Dubu with the fast reflexes, the blast off the side. Beautiful burrow oh, strike look. though. It's looking no, good. Can they turn it back around? Can they get enough now? They'll end up losing great Lilisa. Moon Man also to full bra. Buy back though from Bloody Nine. Luki Luki's gonna take too much tower damage as he's coming in with the reload. They're trying to hunt over here for Dubu, trying to break some ankles, and they'll turn around the corner. They do manage to see him as now Yaren is trying to finish off. Off the Dusa. Is he going to be able to do it? He needs a little bit more. No, Tomato turns around. Thanks to those one charges, we'll be able to survive. Really good team fight by Dog Champ. I think the, the big winner was definitely Luki. Yeah, he did 3,000 damage with his Epi combo. He got his Blink Dagger here. He shaved off his Arcane Boots. He just said, I want to be as good at team fighting as possible. And the fight looked so good for them with that grip. The instant grip catching the Storm Spirit. Saberlight looks for the Io. They burst him with a little bit of casual nuking here. And watch this grip. Just instantly Dubu ready for that. Catches him, they layer this with silence in case Dubu gets interrupted, which he does. But oh. that burrow strike and epi follow up on three. Oh. So good. And the sandstorm damage. And then they leash Ember so he can't jump away. Just perfect team fight there from Dog Chen. 
As we have another fight breaking out in the middle lane, they strike back with a vengeance. Ryle will fall to Ray Lalisa, and on the back lines, looks like Stone Bank has found himself Dubu. So that'll be another kill going to the side of Dog Champ and potentially this middle tower. Yeah, they're pressuring great. This is uh, what they were lacking last game. They didn't get a good blink dagger at a good time. And as a result, their early fights were just so much harder to take. But on the other side now, TSM is the one that has to deal with Sanking, starting these fights and follow-ups happening from either Storm Spirit or the Slark with his Diffusal Blade. So everything's looking pretty good for Dog Champ now. Game's even. Be interested to see what the next moves are here from Dog Champ because they do have that blink on the Sand King. Follows up very nicely. Depending, you know, you've got two options of being able to initiate. Uh, on the flip side of that, though, too, Deuce is still sitting at the top of the net worth. This is a hero that farms very, very quickly. So it's something that's kind of creeping in the back of your mind, right? Yeah, it's a good place to be for Medusa, certainly. Um, she's going for a Sanjin Yasha, which is a little interesting. Um, generic stats. It's going to reduce the disable durations. Um, and movement speed. I'm a little surprised. I mean, there's some other options. Maybe something like a Manta might be better, but let's see if Ember's in trouble here. No, oh, the follow up, the re jump in. Oh, oh, beautifully done. They'll take down Stone Bank and they'll get Bloody Nine. They were not expecting that at all. Prowl was sick of dying, so he's like, all right, guys, play behind me. They keep, <laughs> keep blowing me up. They're hunting for Tomato over here, but he's already realized, hmm, there's some heroes that are unaccounted for on this map. I'm going to go regroup with the rest of my team and play it safe. Yeah, the blink is up on uh, Saber Light. That's what made the fight easier. So now TSM gets to fight back with their uh, their initiation capabilities. Is he even going to pressure the tower too? Yeah, they got a Cardi. They might as well, especially with that dragon form. Still yep. up and running. Immediate Sticky Bomb getting dropped onto the teleporting... Stone bank here. Getting into position. The zip four from Rayla Lisa dragging back immediately over onto Barb with a follow up. It's beautiful. Look at the damage coming out from TSM. As now Stone Bank running for his life. They're trying to get their hands <laughs> on him, but they can't oh, quite do it. They put his hands on him, but it instantly got dark packed. Instantly got dark packed, yes. <laughs> Dude, uh, Luki got really unlucky in that fight. I think what happened is he, he channeled that beast center, he blinks in, and the moment he gets in, right before his burrow comes out, he gets rooted. I assume it was searing chains from Ember. I'm not 100% sure if it was done on purpose, but it completely wrecked their team fight. Because if they get a burrow strike afterwards, he had ink swollen himself too. They probably have a much more convincing team fight there. And instead, it became a combo of disables with the nice follow ups from Techies and team fight win, tier two tower falls. And now, TSM getting net worth advantage and playing aggressive on the map. And Medusa's net worth continues to grow here as she's able to go and take out their own Ancients on the side of Dog Champ. And we're headed towards that Scotty Saber light, though. Finding Luki here, Bloody Nine. Okay, let's go for the Burrow Strike, but the Silence coming out, followed up with the Deuce. sitting into position. It's not looking good for Luki. He's going to fall. They'll follow up now over onto Dubu. Sip around. Bloody Nine will fall down. As Ray Lisa, he's trying to use that last little bit of mana to just try to ball lightning. And the brother, the chase is on Saber light, blinking forward. But they can't quite get their hands on him. But they still want to fight. Kills two, tier one tower gets back door. This tower is going to be pretty useless. And the Radiant Advantage at c controlling Roshan just doesn't look great right now. Especially because Tomato just continues to farm. He's got an ultimate orb into his Scotty, which is obviously going to make him very survivable. And the rest of the Radiant squad, they're going to try to like compensate or come back from this. But with Storm having Sanj and Kaya, they don't exactly have a huge amount of disable right now. It feels like they need like three heroes to get a pick off. And a lot of the cores on the TSM side are pretty survivable. Um, Ember is still vulnerable though. Opted for Orb, Maelstrom, going for BKB now, but he's definitely killable. They have a sentry Venom. down. They can see that Stone Bank is here with the double damage. Ooh, okay. It's a dead yarn. Pass forward though, they do get the leash off over onto Ember. And just try to slide by a little bit more time, and that's a dead Ember Spirit. And it looks like they might go after Dubu too over here. Nice Nightmare buying a bit more time. Saber Light. They'll use the Stone Gaze coming out from Tomato. They want to just push back, and they've got plenty of damage. They've got Fireball Bloody Nine trying to run away. They'll end up taking out Saber Light, but the grip's over here onto the Slark ensures that he's not going to be able to survive. Right, Lilisa then zipping away. Tomato thinking about it, but isn't going to pursue. That was a huge outplay there by uh, Dubu. 
basically baits or gets the Slark to chase him to high ground, ends up staying alive with the Shadow Amulet, knowing that he doesn't have any other good solutions against Slark, ends up getting the, I assume, Nightmare into Fiend's grip off while the Io was busy with the other heroes. So just TSM kind of out skirmishing at this point. Um, the kill on Ember was great, but they over pushed a little bit, fought in division and sentries, and that makes Slark's life a lot harder because he can't abuse extra movement speed or or a regen um, when uh, trying to outsmart his opponents. So a little tough there. Let's see if it's going to get even more difficult. But uh, we do get a little bit of a, a replay over here, as you can see. The initial jump, that nightmare. Stone Gaze coming out from Tomato. And Dubu just waiting patiently. And he just grips him. Yep. He turns and grips him when he's feeling comfortable. Io moves over, ends up getting blown up. Moon Meander follows up. So really good turn there. Um, Dubu does get killed in the live game, though. Let's see if they try to press their advantage more. Mm, feels like... They want to make the moves. There's the Burrow Strike coming out from Lukey Lukey. The follow-up the ball lightning. Nice chain. Oh, oh my just god. Just blown up immediately. And this Deuce oh. just does so much damage with the techies. Yeah, and he's trying to run, yeah, but no. he can't you, get you, out of You there. are not allowed to take the glory away from oh Moon Meander god. there. Let's take a look at the fight recap and the damage dealt. It's not it's the wrong one. Okay, I got the new one. Here it is. 3,700 okay. damage dealt by Techies there. And don't forget that he used, he bought Veil, so he actually amplified his team's magic damage as well. That was huge. Jumps in with Veil, hits him with like a sticky bomb, drops his ulti. Slark just died. Slark popped his ulti at an appropriate time. Still absolutely blasted. So, huge fight there. And uh, Techies showing his value. If the engagements can happen, if Techies can follow up or counter engage, here's valuable. And he's going standard build. Veil ate their lens, got shard to add a stun and more cast range, and um, yeah, follow up is probably gonna be E Blade or something else. Fun to see. Not if you're the enemy team. Look at that nightmare True. immediately. Tossed out by Dubu. He's got the fiend script off. He's like, where is my team? Mono making his way over right here, right now. Has the Scotty completed? They should be able to get the kill over onto Dubu though. Luki Luki following up. Good burrow strike. And they're just going to continue to zip around over on the sides. They'll try and put out the damage onto Tomato, but he's doing too much. He's the Iron Wolf Bolt Brial. They'll eventually be able to take him down. There's no mana left over here on the Deuce. He does have that Aegis, so it's going to pop. Going to make some more plays over onto Moon Meander. He's going to get leashed up. He will fall. Sticky Bomb does get dropped, but they don't have the rest of the team here. This is looking very good for Dog Champ oh because they God. just cannot survive with everything being thrown at Tomato. Oh, what a fight there. Uh, to be honest, that, that mistake is kind of on Tomato there. Like, the, the catch, the grip was whatever. They were ahead. They could make this play. But the issue is that he started attacking from max range. Um, Stone Gaze effectiveness radius. It says it's 1,200, but I didn't see a stun follow-up on the Storm that I expected. So when the grip ended, Storm could start playing Dota, and all of a sudden Medusa got really aggressive and didn't guarantee a, a Storm kill. Ooh, so that hurt a lot. moves here over in the mid lane. He was just trying to defend his tower, but they had the Burrow Strike, they had the stuns, the leash, and they'll slay the Dragon Knight. Uh, There's a lot of net worth advantage uh, being pulled away from TSM. Pretty big mistake losing the fight that bad. They're going to have to shape up a bit here after that because now Slark is in kind of dangerous territory. It's not still mega farmed. He's basically starting his Scotty, but... They went for the reload too. They were hoping to get their hands on him. Yeah, they'll just push out the creep wave. That's still quite good for them. And if uh, Sark can finish up Scotty, excellent item against his opponents, especially against Medusa. Medusa's single target damage isn't so good. That means Sark can kind of play around and be aggressive against her. But finally, Stone Bank and the rest of the squad getting some good map control with that team fight. Only behind by 5k now, so definitely a big improvement. Yeah, if you take a look at the charts, they definitely tell a story of uh, some of those last fights there. <laughs> yes. But TSM's still in an okay place. The, again, the carry matchup isn't great, but Deuces still has good net worth advantage over their opponents, and they're going to do the same thing and go for a team fight. I'm letting Saber Light kind of lead the charge here. So they don't have much vision up over on the side of the Radiant Jungle, so they are at a bit of a guess. So they're just patiently waiting, like, someone's got to come push this out, right? I like this, because if they invade the jungle, normally what you do is you run in the jungle here, but they haven't. They lost a fight here earlier, so they don't have vision control. Mm -hmm. They're hoping their opponents come for them instead on a, on a slight, slightly equal territory. And they'll put down a tri-camp ward while the smoke is up, might as well. But Dogchamp does not fall, fall for this. They spread out across the map. They probably want to give their Slark a little bit more time before he fights, so his raw HP gets higher. Harder for techies to burst him then. 
It also allows them to go and drop uh, some of those bombs around the map, too, while they have that smoke going. As you can see, the uh, try area, they had dropped a couple, but... They're dodging quite effectively on the side of Doctor. But they did just finish up a BKB as well over on Ember. Okay. So that gives them a bit more survivability. It's an okay time to fight. Dragonite's also close. So we'll see if they fight before or after uh, Dragonite BKB. But I'm going to assume they're going to want to wait until after. Uh, they are abusing techies a little bit with his red mines. They are still okay at uh, providing area control. I wish, I wish the shard on Sand King had a better name than just Epicenter. It's very misleading. <laughs> it's an Epicenter upgrade, I guess. But it's not the same, you know? It's true. It's not a new ability is probably why it just has the same name. I guess. Like Pulse? I don't know. I guess Pulse doesn't work either because that's similar to Lishrek. Yeah, it looks like all the shards that upgrade an ability, they just say the ability to make it clear. Mm. It's not cool, but it's oh. clear. Bryle having to pop the BKB to get away here. Very costly. He's definitely been the, the vulnerable person. I wonder how different this game would be if Ember would have skipped Maelstrom and just gone like fast Yules or BKB instead. Mm -hmm. He would have died less in the engagements and maybe TSM would be in a better role, but hard to say. Bane's having a great uh, great game though, level 13. The reload Lots coming in hot. Bottom lane, they'll go, they'll grab Saber Light and uh, start channeling a little bit, but they decide to opt against these, dropping down the fireball. There's a four from Ray Lalisa. We'll make sure he can't escape. All right, not bad. And Slark being aggressive bottom. Definitely hard to play techies against this at this point. Just needs to follow up on his allies, but he's very vulnerable to either Storm or the Slark right now. Reactive Taser helps against Storm, I guess, but that's about it. Oh, Lightning, they found themselves a Dubu, but immediately the Glimmer Cape protecting. Seeing if they can catch anyone. Looks like they've managed to found themselves a Slark, but the Burrow Strike coming in fluky. A bit more time. They'll follow up with that Soul Bind, leashing the two together, but there's no follow up now from the side of Dog Champ. Yeah, they do force out Shadow Dance at least. That part's not terrible, but no follow up in a major way. Um, decent damage at least. But TSM just clearly waiting for their, their gold advantage to compound to like. Uh, Medusa is still farming really, really well. She definitely farms faster than a Slark can. There's no doubt about that. Slark has always been classically a hero that succeeds by getting hero kills while also farming. So if Deuce is just hitting split camps and stuff, she's going to hit an item time timing that's really powerful. And she's already finished Hurricane Pike. She's got to get the Slark off of her if possible. And this is going to be a moment where she gets killed, actually, unless she gets a TP out. Mm, is she going to make it? No, nah, no. Nah, there's a storm there. He's not going to let her out. So she go for the stone gaze, but... Gonna need to get out of there in a hurry, because the rest of the team is pincering onto Tomato. Yeah, there it is, Luki following up the Barrow Strike. They've got the Ink Swell. They've got a Silence on top of the Stews. This is a very, very dead Tomato. And it might be a dead Saber Light, although he's gone and he's used his BKB. Get the epicenter off from Luki, but it doesn't really matter too much because of that. BKB, they slide forward here, jumping from Rayla Lisa, trying to get the damage down. The Fiend Script not gonna be able to really do a whole heck of a lot as they'll chase after Moon Meander, getting some of these clicks. Luki, Luki will fall. Now there's Silence being tossed out because they have the Soul by Snowbank. He's just trying to jump in and out, trying to get some of these stacks here. Shadow Dance coming through. Bloody Nine will fall. And they do manage to get the sleep off. This is not looking good. Snowbank perhaps a bit too far, but it's going to have to pounce up over to the high ground. They don't quite manage to go and close the gap as Barl is still giving chase. Might be able to go and get Yarn. No, Stonebank going back in, but he's going to get held to plays again. He's just going to try to purge it off. The jump forward here from Techies. Moon should fall here for this, but they'll be able to get a kill beforehand. And Moon, he's somehow still alive. He's trying. They go and they drop oh my it. Oh god. my god, Moon Meander. As they go right back. Oh, not again. again. This is not looking good for Ray Lisa. There's too oh much damage. Oh my god. What a team fight from TSM. That was incredible. That was not easy in the slightest. I mean, they started the fight with no Medusa and someone with four heroes that killed the entire enemy team. That is what a fight from them. I want to know crap. what the comms sounded like during all of that. That's got to be. As soon as he survived against the Slark the first time, I'm sure he's screaming. That was incredible. <laughs> Here's that last uh, little engagement. Great for them to turn on Bryle for sure. Slark gets back in with the Ink Swell. It's going to be a lot of damage. Glimmer Cape helping out a lot. The stun, they just kept covering each other in a great way. 
Moon Meander stays alive. He gets away from the Dark Pack damage. They throw everything just trying to kill the damn Slark, and they get him. And then Storm's like, okay, I'm going to get a cleanup kill for sure, guys. No problem. Once again, Saberlight saves his life with, the, with his own stun. Another Glimmer to protect him and just cleaned up. In the live game, Brawl going crazy getting yeah, kills. Yeah, he is. He's diving those towers. <laughs> Ends up killing uh, the Io. Now oh, pressure. looking for Luki. Luki. Luki channeling up the epicenter. Oh, and he's just gone. Epicenter for what? He missed the stun, unfortunately. Brile dodging out and forces more cooldowns. It means no epicenter threat. Great game for TSM, except for the times they threw a little bit. But now it's looking good again. <laughs> They're in a decent place. Titan Sliver on Medusa as well. Great item pickup. It's going raw damage. Daedalus up next. They just need to play around him a little bit. Um, you know, he just retreated literally a quarter of a second too too late. Ends up getting punished, but hey, his team still wins the team fight, and they are ready to fight. BKBs are good to go. Lots of good utility items. Just gotta initiate properly, cover each other, and it, it should be fine. Ooh, Enchanted Quiver gets found by Dusa Blastrig over on Slark, so a couple more neutral items. As they find themselves to Motto, he wanders into everyone here. Good nightmare, though, coming out from Bane. Buys a bit more time. The soul find is out, though. As there's the stone gaze onto the stone bank. The slight comes out. All right, it's going to be using here, but they have a good grip over onto the slide. Not quite enough to finish off for Elisa. Stone bank does fall, and that's Scotty slowing down Bloody Nine. Ryle hunting on his way. Lukey Lukey hiding over into the corner, trying to teleport out. Is he going to be able to do it? Do they manage to get the chains now? Stone Bank, he's back in here. Turning around, the BKB over onto Barl, chasing after the Slark. He's a little bit more damage. He's going to try to go run them forward. A good stun, though, coming out from Luki. We'll slow them down. The zip for Rayla Lisa. Are they going to be able to go with this? They take down Barl. Already lost Bloody Nine. That Phantom Surprise being applied over onto DK. Moon Meander, look at this. They want to try to protect him. He's got the Ghost Scepter. He had the Glimmer on him, but what a fight. Everyone was really low in dog champ, but TSM unable to finish off the right heroes there. Um, they definitely felt a lot stronger against Slark in that engagement, that's for sure. Uh, forced his HP low, he's forced to retreat. Kept almost killing heroes, but they just couldn't quite do it. Psychic Headband, a great pickup. Oh, we got Ceremonial Robe as well. So good on techies. Another way to amplify spell damage and lower enemy magic resistance. So perfect item for him. He's doing great. 8, 3, and 17 now. Had two excellent games from Moon Meander. But what was crucial was that Medusa was able to get her ultimate off in the last fight. And even though Slark can dispel it, they threw, they layered a lot of damage on him and it kind of allowed them to create a sort of, it's kind of like a Song of the Siren situation where it's like, okay, that guy can remove it, but it still doesn't mean the rest of the team can run in and fight Medusa. So as long as they back up Tomato, his net worth is going to be leveraged really effectively. Looks like we had a little bit of a lag issue here. So, yeah, I can see that initial opening. It's looking good at the start. The Nightmare, though. Finds Mato some time. The Soul Bind. Dubu gets a good grip off over here on the side, but they needed a little bit more damage. Man, they were so close to killing Storm. It's a great grip. The, the Slark lives with, like, 5 HP. The Io almost dies as well. The, the Storm Spirit gets away. It was, it was kind of robbery that the uh, Dog Champ didn't lose more there. And then Brawl's like, all right, guys, well, we really need to... Let's get a kill. Come on. So he's like, all right, I'm going to go for this one. All I need to do is get high ground vision, one more slight, they all die. He gets Burrow Strike really effectively by Luki there. And they do their best. And then Silence plus Storm getting stuff done. Um, with that said, they only lost one on the TSM side, but it was a great punish for their overaggression. And then Storm almost dies. It's <laughs> a lot of damage. Yeah, it was a good fight from both teams. I feel like we've seen two flights now where it's been very, very close. Like it's been a hair's edge for uh, you know who ends up being on top, and that's uh, that's kind of Dota I like to watch. It is really fun, yeah. They were very, very close engagements so far. Uh, we've got an Ags on the way for Grimstroke. It's a beautiful item against Dusa because it's going to make a dark clone of uh, her hero, and uh, the clones do a lot of damage. A so. beautiful dark portrait of a beautiful snake lady. It's going to do a lot. It's it's always really powerful. You can kill it with physical damage, so Dusa can deal with it, certainly. It's going to shred um, her team, though. That's, yeah, that's it, the issue, right? If she's got Split Shot going, yeah, it can do a huge amount of damage. Break Blink Daggers, that kind of thing. Hmm. But they can kill it, too. It just takes a lot of right click. It's never fun when you have to deal with yet another thing on the team, but Snowbank making his way over. Already Bloody Knight has fallen. Pop the BKB on Saber Light. They've got the Ink Swell over on Stonebake. He's trying to decide where he wants to go. Does he want to commit? No, they'll back off. They don't have an aisle. Oh, 
So BKBs get used, Brawl's still dead, but hey, they get the pick off, and they are going to start on the Roshan. All right, Saberlight can certainly tank this, deal decent damage. He's queuing up an Ags, in case he wants that. Great Arcane Rune here, going to lower cooldowns for Dusa. Well, they do have to be careful of the zip and whatnot. Try and get in there. We do have a completed Ethereal Blade over on Techies now. They don't have the aisle for another couple couple seconds. Like a stone bake just crawls in. It's like, what's going on? Maybe get a couple of these hits up over to Saber Light. Nice small bind holding them together. They're all leashed up and they Break can't rip. quite make a way. A nice burrow strike coming in. They'll end up taking that stomach in Yaren and will also full bloody nine. Then Saber Light over on the back line forced away here. It is gonna get taken down. But Rayla Lisa will fall to Moon Meander, and they still finishing up the Roche while all this goes down. Damato gets it, Moon Meander gets himself a triple kill, and TSM comes out on top. He just he just completely owned again. That fight, he does 4,800 damage. He did more damage than any other hero in that engagement. It's incredibly good. Four sticky bombs, four of his ultimates, plus an E-Blade. I mean, Stonebank runs in, uses his ultimate to uh, provide some space creation. It looked really solid for Dogchamp at the start, but the grip on Storm limits his damage. There's a pretty good uh, jump in by Luki Luki, and they're able to kill Dragonite, but Moonmander just jumps in, stunning, throwing nukes, hitting everybody. There's a bomb right there. I don't even know when he placed that one, but it blew up Storm Spirit. <laughs> then they pick up Luki as well, just more and more damage. If you can't deal with these mines, like if you can't stop Techies from dropping mines on you, he blows you up. He is a huge damage output hero right now. Now with uh, most of them dead on the side of Dog Champ, Tomato's got the Aegis. He can walk right into this base and start dishing out the hurt. Does have Daedalus online. Yeah, look at the damage dealt in that last fight. 38.1k. That's total of the whole game. Oh, that's a whole game. He's God winning damn. the game. Goddamn. All right. <laughs> yeah, Moon having a great game. Really Respect. showing the value of the hero. If you can coordinate with your team, that your damage is almost unrivaled in terms of AoE and magic resistance reduction. It's, it's genuinely a strong hero. Mm. People oh. are just bad, that's all it is. Now the question is, is this going to be a, one of those things where, you know, you have to be very aware that TSM can play and run the techies, or is it just in this particular setup? Um, it could be that they're more flexible with the hero pick because they're up one game, you know, like take the, take the expected win, in game two you can mess around slightly, um, but I genuinely think the hero has value. I liked the combo, the the laning stage stuff with the IO pairing. It's a cool way to double nuke um, when they're close together. I thought that was kind of cool, but I think as a whole, the hero is, is effective and can be picked. I just, maybe it's a little bit situational because it doesn't always offer, if you're playing from behind, the hero can struggle a little bit. It's not as reliable as some other four that can gap close and initiate, but it, it can be good. Yeah, it definitely feels like a very specific kind of niche pick, but wasn't sure. You know, it'd be interesting to see how they proceed going forward smoke play coming out from dog champ and we did just see that uh, moon has picked himself up a blink dagger and he has that shard as well so be very aware of the positioning of this techies because it does provide that stun now that he's got the shard for his blast off there's the Aghanim Scepter completed for DK, and the assault is on. They still have the Sages for another two minutes or so. Saber Light jumping forward immediately as his eyes on the Slark. Sticky Bomb tossed out. <laughs> so much of his health is already gone. Soul Bike is thrown up by Yaren. They're going to follow up again with Burrow. Decent amount of damage. They are leashed together. The stun, though, coming through the zip from Ray Lilisa. Looking for the opening of Fiend's Grip, though. Coming up from oh Super. Doesn't God, matter that he's got the BKB going. They try to get to Mato, but he's absolutely fine. And he still has that Aegis online. The consistency, consistency that Dubu has gripped Storm this game has been incredible. It's every single fight. He knows his coming. He's like, all right, here comes Storm. Boom, grips him. And it just shuts down his, his BKB. Oh, bling forward, Ryle searching on the back lines, wants to get rid of this eye. He's going to be able to find it. Now Stonebank is left on his own little eye. Does have the Shadow Dance, though. Ryle being a bit cheeky. And go and Bloody Nine, though, is already dead. They'll end up losing Stonebank, and they're doing a decent amount of damage to Luki on top of that, Yaren, trying to throw out Silas. He's trying. They do manage to take down Ryle, but he's Yaren. And they'll cut through these bases and the buildings over on the side of TSM. Yep. Pretty straightforward team fight. Like the, the damage Slark was doing against Ember was just not enough. Moon Meander jumps in to stun him afterwards, gets the damage follow up. Dead carry. Saberlight dropping the fireball over onto Luki Luki. Follow up from Bryle. He's bought back. He wants to be a part of this. Have to be careful, boys. Don't dive that fountain too hard. Tomato is understanding the assignment. It is Defense of the Ancient. He is assaulting 
their towers to get to that Ancient right here, right now. No Slark for 40-something seconds. They've got the Inkswell over here, but it's not doing a whole heck of a lot. Yarn's still trying. Can they finally take down Dusa? Yes, that's going to be the Aegis. Yarn, though, will fall for his troubles. Coming right back up again. Bloody Nine just getting chipped away. Oh, lose Lukey, Lukey. Really, Lucy drags in everybody with a beautiful Vortex, but he's got to do more than that. They need to get someone else out there. And Stonebank, he does fly back, but look at this damage. Oh, look at this. He wanted Saberlight so bad, but he's not going to be able to. Tomato says, get this annoying little fish out of my face. I've got an Ancient to destroy.